What's happening, Plight Society? I hope you're having a good week. If you're here for the first time, welcome to my channel. I'm Alan. Today, we're continuing with our new series on entertainment. So let's delve in. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 is the seventh installment in the MI movie series, which began in 1996. The film stars global box office sensation Tom Cruise as Ethan Hunt in the lead role. I'm going to do my best to try to avoid plot spoilers. But in all honesty, since I'm going to recommend this title, your best option might be to watch the movie first, then come back and watch this review. But that's up to you. Okay, here goes. The film opens with a segment involving a Russian submarine. A mysterious force hijacks the sub's control systems and attacks the underwater craft, causing all of the crew members to be killed. We then jump to Ethan Hunt, who is contacted and asked to recover one half of a key from his friend, who is a fellow agent. Hunt's primary goal in the film centers around recovering this cruciform key, which is supposedly the way to seize control of the dark artificial intelligence, known as the Entity. But this is questionable, because the exact nature of control that the key holds is unknown. Hunt is reunited with allies from previous films, including Benji and Luther. There are also four ladies in the film as well. Some serve as foils to Ethan, others as allies some alternating between the two depending on the specific plot point at hand. Let's move into criticism. While there are quite a few elements in the film which are illogical, overall Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning 1 is an exciting, action-packed, interesting spy thriller, which is a lot of fun to watch. The runtime of 163 minutes is a bit long, as it seems with all modern-day blockbusters. But in all honesty, I didn't really feel it. I suppose the bar is set pretty low for contemporary Hollywood films. But as others have pointed out, like Top Gun Maverick, one of the most likable qualities of MI7 is the absence of woke ideology and propaganda. In recent years, we've seen legacy characters like Luke Skywalker and others relegated to disgruntled, pathetic, incompetent old men who have given up on life. They are frequently overshadowed by some insufferable Mary Sue who has no character flaws, and who is better at any and everything than the aging male characters are. The only barriers characters like Rey seem to need to overcome are those created by the evil white male patriarchy. The hero's journey, which has captivated audiences forever, has been replaced by self-actualization. Unlike the disastrous Indiana Jones 5, which has the aforementioned Mary Sue in the form of the annoying Helena, played by Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who is smarter, quicker, and better than Indiana in every way, Cruz's MI film is absent of such nonsense. It's 2023, so Feminista is not going to be totally absent from any mainstream movie. But while none of Dead Reckoning's women are Susie Homemakers, none of them are Mary Sue's either. Each is specialized in certain skills and is at home in that craft. The leading lady shows vulnerability at several points and in one scenario, prefers a man to be behind the wheel rather than herself. The Entity. Look, I'm no mind reader. I don't know what went into the minds of Macquarie and Cruz when they made this film. But when the Entity is shown in visible form on a screen, he seems to be reminiscent of the all-seeing eye. Also, the actor who plays the lead villain is referred to at one point as the Dark Messiah. His character is also named Gabriel, like the Archangel. I wonder if that is simply a coincidence. In one scene after his friends' lives are threatened, Cruz says, if anything happens to them, there's no place you and your God will be safe. Is the entity supposed to be based upon the demiurge of ancient Gnosticism? I have no idea. All of that is just speculation. But certainly some food for thought. All that aside, though, I would definitely recommend Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. It's not a perfect film, but it's a good old-fashioned fun spy thriller. It's PG-13, so it's not going to be laced with profanity and inappropriate sensual content. It's not boring. It has a strong male lead character. The cinematography and editing are fantastic. And the action scenes, for the most part, are thrilling and satisfactory. All right, that's a wrap for now. Ladies and gents, if you want to share your own thoughts, be sure to do so in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content here, you can subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right. Then you can hit the bell for notifications. I upload a new video every Wednesday and every Saturday, usually. Have an awesome rest of your week, and for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all always. I will see you all in the next video. God's blessings on your week.